Guess who I ran into yesterday? Who? Mac. Where you run into him? Mama put down the dish towel and turned toward Jamal. Over near St. Nicholas? Well, what were you doing over there? Just walking. Just walking my foot. When I asked, when do you think I was born? Sometime this morning? No, ma'am. I don't want you, I don't want to hear you. I'm sorry. I don't want you near that boy. You understand me, Jamal Hicks? Yes, ma'am. And I don't want his name mentioned in this house. If Randy wasn't out fooling around with that lame brain, you know he ain't right, don't you? Well, he don't act right. So what you souping up to him for? I told you, I just run into him. Don't you told me nothing, fresh mouth. Sassy came out of her bedroom and sat down at the table. What you want, Sassy? You said that we shouldn't have no family secrets, Mama. Sassy, you can stay out here, but keep your mouth shut. I wasn't going to say nothing, Sassy said. He can hang out with any kind of hoodlums he wants to, for all I care. Sassy, go to your room. Mama, all I said was, girl, if I take my shoe off, you're going to wish you had your hind parts in your room. Sassy shot Jamal a look and went to her room. Mama turned back to her cooking. She had spent nearly an hour washing the mustard greens, cutting up the the streak of lean to put in them, and boiling pork chips in vinegar and water. Jamal didn't say any, any more about Mac. What he wanted was to ask Mama for the lawyer's card so he could call him and find out how much it would cost for the appear, appeal. It had cost nearly $700 for the lawyer to begin with. Randy hadn't wanted the public defender. There was a radio on somewhere in the building playing gospel songs. They got some gospel music on the radio, Jamal said. You want me to find it for you? Mama looked over at Jamal, then looked away, back to her greens. Then she went over to the radio, put it on, and started searching for the gospel music. After a while, she found it, took a step away from the imitation leather radio, then turned back to it and cut it off. What did Mac say? She asked. Nothing much. Boy, you got to know this thing is cutting into my heart like a knife. Now don't you play with me, because I just cannot stand it. As God is my secret judge, I don't need to be played with. He said that the lawyer called him and said he needed money for the appeal, but he said it was $2,000. What kind of lawyer would be calling him? Well, that's just what he said. $2,000? I thought about calling the lawyer and asking him. Mama started humming to herself, and Jamal knew she was doing some heavy thinking when she started humming to herself. I don't know why Randy told you it was $500, and the lawyer told Mac it was $2,000. One day it's 500, then the next day it's 2,000, and the next day it's, it's, two, uh, it's 1,000, and the next day it's 2,000, Mama said with a sigh. They know, you lo they know you love these children. you got to do what you can. What else did Max say? Nothing. Jamal? What I, want, what I want to talk to him for, Jamal said. You just keep it in your head that that boy ain't had no upbringing and don't amount to two cents, and that's what God loves, the truth. You going to call the lawyer? and thinking about trying to borrow the money from Mr. Stanton. Jamal turned away. The last time Mama borrowed money from Mr. Stanton to pay for Randy's lawyer and to buy him a new suit so he could look good at the trial, she had to work for him for almost six months at for nothing to pay the loan off. I could get an afternoon job, Jamal said. You want to call the lawyer? Go ahead, Mama said. Where's his card? Mama went and got the lawyer's card from her dresser. Jamal looked at it, then started dialing the number. When he had finished, Mama took the phone from him. She tapped her foot and hummed while she waited for someone to answer. Yes, I'd like to speak to Mr. Addison, please, she said. It's about Randy Hicks' case. Hello, Mr. Addison, this is Mrs. Hicks. I'm calling about my son, Randy. Mama nodded as she listened to the voice on the other end of the phone. Behind her, Sassy was putting the pot on for tea. No, he already been on trial, Mama said. He got 15 to life. He's tall, brown-skinned. Mama was listening again. They, they say he shot a man. Mama's voice dropped. She listened again. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's him. He said you told him he could get an appeal for $500 and... Mama motioned for Sassy to bring her something to write on. Sassy brought her a ballpoint pen and a piece of theme paper. Uh-huh. I see. Uh-huh. And bring the money down to you? Mama nodded, then hung up the phone. What's he say? Jamal searched Mama's face. He says he don't know if it can go through, but he can make an appeal. It's going to cost about $2,000, but he'll start, start it with 500 I thought Randy could get a free lawyer, Sassy said. Mr. Addison said he could try that if he wanted. 
but he didn't sound like he had much faith in it, Mama said. And how are you going to say no if he said he might get Randy out? $2,000 is a lot of money, Sassy said. The lawyers got to get their money too, Mama said. What you going to do, Jamal asked. I have to try and get it together, whatever it takes, Mama said. Her eyes were shiny and Jamal thought she might cry. Jamal, you mind making some hamburgers for you and Sassy? It's too hard on you, Mama, Sassy said. Jamal had never seen Sassy cry so fast over anything. It's too hard. One day, Mama's eyes looked far away. I was walking downtown with Randy in my arms. I was waiting for a light to change when this white lady stopped and looked at him. I looked at her and she was smiling and I smiled back at her. And that was the best feeling in the world. You got a baby and you hope so much for it. I'll make the hamburgers, Jamal said. Mama went into her bedroom and Jamal could hear the bed springs under her weight. That was what the whole thing with Randy was doing to her, making her tired, making her just want to lie down and go to sleep. I hope Randy get out soon, Sassy said. I hope he never gets out, Jamal said. I'm going to tell Mama you said that. Don't you tell her, Jamal said. I will. If you do, I'm going to punch you in your face. I'm going to tell her you said that too, Sassy said. Mama! Go on, Jamal said. Make her feel worse. You don't care. What you want, Sassy? Mama's voice came from the other room. She doesn't want nothing, Jamal said. He waved his finger in front of Sassy's face. Don't you tell me what I want, Sassy's voice rose. Jamal heard the bed springs again as Mama got up. Can't you children get along for two minutes? Mama stood in the doorway. When she had her shoes off, she wasn't much taller than Jamal. Jamal said he hopes Randy don't never get out of jail. Jamal, how do you fix your mouth to say something like that? Jamal's voice, or Mama's voice cracked and her face tensed so that Jamal could see her teeth. How you fix your mouth to say that, boy? The tears were coming down Mama's face and Jamal turned away from her. I'm sorry, he said. Lord Jesus, Mama said. Lord Jesus, what is this family coming to? Jamal looked up as Mama went back into her bedroom. You ain't so big now, are you? Sassy said. Jamal looked up at her. At least I didn't say nothing to make her cry, he said. He went to the bathroom and closed the door. He took his pants down and sat on the toilet, the top of his legs spread out against the white toilet seat. It was true. He didn't ever want to see Randy again. Randy was always making Mama cry. Everything his brother did just seemed to be wrong. And Randy didn't even know how Mama felt. Or maybe he didn't even care. Jamal didn't know. He had gotten into trouble with the police before, and Mama had had to go to court and miss work because of him. Then what did Randy say when he come home? Some jive stuff about how he was too slick for the police. Mama was crying all night long when they had Randy out in New Jersey at the youth house, and she had to borrow money and everything just to get him out. Jamal took some toilet tissues and wiped the tears away from his face. This mess was the worst, he thought. If Randy got out again, he was just going to do some more messing up. Jamal just knew he would. Jamal? Sassy's voice. Get out of here. I got to pee. Jamal thought about just ignoring Sassy, but then he figured she would just go in and bother Mama again. So he got up, pulled his pants up, and opened the door. Sassy was standing in the doorway. I'm sorry. Oh, shut up. Well, you're the one that... Jamal shut Sassy up with a look. She went into the bathroom and closed the door. Jamal washed his hands and went to the refrigerator. There were three hamburger patties in a neat pile next to the milk. He glanced over at Mama's door. He figured she wouldn't need anything. He took one hamburger for Sassy. He wasn't hungry either. All right, that's chapter five.